Well, it all started back in 2015 when I learned how to make maps for a game called Gary's Mod, and I did that for about seven years. Sometime in college, I picked up the Unity game engine and failed over and over to produce anything of value except for one really good game jam that I worked on with a bunch of my friends. I knew that I wanted to make video games and create cool experiences, but I was really struggling to find the focus, motivation, and energy to follow my dreams. Things were looking pretty grim until November of 2022 when I discovered the Godot game engine. Okay, so my entrance to Godot was nowhere near as cool as the entrance to this video. I started off trying to make three different games, but I kept getting distracted and drawn to a new project, so I didn't finish any of them. In December, I focused all of my efforts on creating a first person shooter in a post apocalyptic world, basically a Fallout clone. I followed a bunch of YouTube tutorials on how to make a player controller, how to program NPCs, AI, how to deal with Godot's 3D transforms and raycasts and all that math. After every tutorial my confidence would go up and my game was starting to come together, but I still wasn't very good at the Godot engine. And the simplest things like picking up items would take me days to get done. I started 2023 with a new year's resolution to get better at making games, and I figured the best way to do that would be to do a bunch of game jams. First thing I did in the new year was I signed up for a 72 hour game jam called Ludum Dare and I found some random friendly people on the jams discord. We all teamed up and my teammates taught me a bunch about the engine and 72 hours later we had a complete game. You play as a necromancer who harvests the souls of enemy knights to summon your own knights and then assault the castle gates. Having teammates to work with gave me the motivation I needed to stay focused and I'm really happy with what we came up with. Later on in January I found the Godot Wild Jam. It's a 9 day game jam that gives you 2 weekends and 1 week to work with your teammates to make a game. I found some random and friendly people on the Godot Wild Jam's Discord team up channel. And once the jam started we decided to make a game where the Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz has to fight some monkeys or something. Unfortunately our team wasn't very coordinated and half of us ended up going on vacation for the last weekend so the game never got finished. That's okay though, we learn from our losses and we keep moving on. In February, my buddy Lucas and I found the Global Game Jam was being hosted at a local college in our state. We drove through the freezing cold to get there and we got put on a team with some game development students. After 48 hours and pizza and donuts, we made a turn-based rhythm game where a mafia man has to fight through a warehouse to recover his family heirloom. Later on in February, I rejoined the developers from the Eversoul game to do the February Go Dot Wild Jam. And we made a game where a knight has to throw villagers out of a castle that is collapsing into the ocean. This jam, I focused on creating a procedurally generated castle, and it was fun to learn some new coding concepts. After the February game jam, I came up with an idea for a game jam idea generator. It only took me a day to make a generator that provides you with a random protagonist, antagonist, setting, art style, and at the very end, it takes all the results and builds you a design document and a project schedule for you and your team to follow when you're doing a game jam. In March, I went to Puerto Rico on vacation, and when I got back, I did a digital detox for a couple weeks to reset myself and get some serious rest in. And then the April Wild Jam rolled around, and I joined a team of 11 people. We had a producer who helped manage everyone, and we ended up creating an awesome game where a giant lizard knocks down city buildings and fights tanks and helicopters. This jam became in second place out of 56 teams. Later on in April, I tried doing a 72 hour Ludum Dare game jam again, but this time all by myself. I made a puzzle game where you have to order these three cute little robots around and have them activate buttons and open doors, but at the end of the weekend I only had one level complete. It was challenging not having teammates to hold me accountable, and I was pretty tired so I decided not to push myself that weekend and I rested up a little bit. After failing to push myself to finish the Ludum Dare game jam, I started to realize that making games is a pretty lonely process. Without having other people to share the games with, you start to question why you should push through all the problems along the way to bring your ideas into reality. So I started working on a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer game during the month of May. Once I got basic multiplayer working, every morning after that I would pick a random feature to add to the game. I ended the month with a first person multiplayer shooter with wall running and cooking and these tiny little NPCs that fight each other and some big red beans that explode when they chase you. Unfortunately, after adding all these unoptimized features, the game was like way too laggy to run on my friends' computers, and this was pretty discouraging, so I gave up on doing multiplayer for a little while. I wasn't alone for too long because in June I teamed up again with my good out wild jam friends, and we ended up making a game where you play as a cloud that has to water these plants that are harvested by these tiny little villagers. I focused on programming the AI for the villagers in this jam, which was pretty frustrating because they would often just completely ignore what I was coding them to do, and they would just run as fast as they could off of the side of the planet. 
Also in June, I signed up for the Greenlight Jam, which is a game jam that runs for five weeks, and at the end of the five weeks, you'll have a game fully released on Steam. Unfortunately, I had some travel plans that cut into a lot of that time, so I didn't really finish. But honestly, the biggest issue was motivation. I was starting to realize that like working alone is super hard. In July, my team and I made a game where a girl uses her friendly frog to lockpick safes and sneak around some train guards and collect all the coins. And then later on in July, I discovered that the Blackthorn Prod YouTube channel was putting on a pass the game challenge where your game gets passed around to a bunch of other developers for six days. It was a really fun experience working on other people's projects and seeing how they made things. And it was also really cool to see how the projects evolved as people added more and more to them every day. In August, I teamed up with my good at Wild Jam friends again to make a game where an Egyptian pharaoh has to fight these bandits in order to regain the power in his magical staff. This jam was a bit stressful because I created a huge spaghetti code mess that made making any changes to the enemy's AI like a nightmare. I also accidentally overwrote our scene files a couple times, but thankfully we were using GitHub to manage the project, so it was a quick fix to bring back the files. This jam is definitely the best looking game I've worked on so far. Later on in August, I found the motivation to make a split screen multiplayer racing game. I realized that we could use Steam's remote play together feature to run the game entirely on my computer and then just send the controller inputs over the internet, which fixed the laggy multiplayer issues we had back in May. Uh, I cooked up a simple racing game with laps and jumping and respawns. I'm pretty happy with how it came out and I might continue working on it later. In September, I was fueled with motivation to prove my abilities to myself, so I did a Goat Out Wild Jam all by myself, and I'm super happy with how it came out. I made a whole other video on my YouTube channel for that game jam, you can go check it out. Also, make sure you subscribe, because I'm going to make more cool stuff. After finishing my first solo game jam, I was pumped up and ready to keep working. Since my favorite holiday Halloween was coming up, I decided to make a multiplayer party game that would be like a mix of Clue, Call of Duty Zombies, and Freeze Tag. This time I focused on making a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer game that could do all the heavy processing on the host computer so that my friends could play it. The code and art for this game was coming along great, but I was having trouble figuring out how to turn Clue into a first-person game with action involved. Eventually the end of the month came around and I stopped working on the game. My buddy Xavier and I did a playtest of what I had finished, and it ran at around 55 FPS on his computer, so I consider this project to be a great success and I'm definitely going to finish it sometime in the future. In October, I tried doing Go Out Wild Jam alone again. I had a strong vision for the art in the game, but after a couple days of making art assets and a little bit of coding, I didn't have enough motivation to keep working on a project. I took some time to rest up and spend time with friends, and I'll reuse those assets in another game in the future. In November, I went on vacation to Ireland for a couple days, and I saw the Cliffs of Mohair. Uh, and I saw what looked kind of like the ruins of a cathedral in the water at the base of the cliffs, and I thought that would be a sick place for a sword fight, so right now I'm making it into a game. So I'm working on that right now. Um, but in conclusion, it's been a lit year, and I'm pretty happy with all the projects I finished. Even though it was slow and sometimes painful, I made a lot of progress with every baby step I took. If you want to make games, I can't recommend game jams enough. Just remember to make time for yourself to rest up and get outside and spend time with friends. Live life and breathe air. Happy jamming. <laughs>